Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Roberts. Hello. Um, I thought I'd raise the tone a bit. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about this painting here. A big hole in the middle. <laughs> um, lovely painting of a rather rotund gentleman who's obviously distressed that he's lost his, I guess, grandchild looking at the age of him. <laughs> grandchild called Willie. So, my sister used to be a carnival queen when I was young. And we used to parade her around on the bonnet of the car. Um, with quite a nice big kind of wedding style dress. Um, and we parade her around on the car and I come from North Wales, so I come from a place called Prostatin, which nobody's ever heard of. Um, but it's next to Rip, which most people have heard of. Um, so my sister was Prostatin Carnival Queen. And she, we'd parade around the local carnivals, usually on a hill, so she'd be gripping on, kind of sliding off the bonnet while she was looking beautiful. Um, my mother made me a nice Bernie Clifton ostrich. <laughs> um, and so I would dress with my nice skinny legs with some yellow tights, marigolds on my feet, riding my Bernie Clifton ostrich, pecking at the flowers that my mum had lovingly created for my beautiful paraded sister sliding off the bonnet. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know why. I don't know what, why we were trying to sell all that. We didn't get rid of that. Um, and then I graduated to work on a fair. So I used to work on real fair. I used to sell candy floss. And I've actually forgotten one of my props, which is in my bag. I used to sell candy floss and rock. I'm going to go and get my bag. This is interactive, this talk. I'm back, it's okay. So, I used to sell rock and candy floss to all of those lovely tourists that came in, ready to have their two weeks of holiday. Um, busy time of the year was when Stoke closed down for two weeks and we'd have two weeks of the Stoke holiday makers coming in, all coming along and buying their rock. And this is, a, this is quite typical of what we sold in real, in this state, without the feather, in that state of slightly nicely molten, slightly rough rock um, in the shape of a penis. Usually quite long ones as well. These are quite a recent ones, smaller ones. So we'd sell rock to people while they were on holiday for them to take back to grandma as a nice little gift. And I guess that's affected the way that I approach my work. Um, Donald McGill was prosecuted for obscenity for the postcards that he did. Um, but it's your fault, really. He was prosecuted for a thought. If you associate anything other than that nice gentleman looking for his grandchild, then it's in your brain, it's in your mind. Okay, so you connect the dots together. <clears throat> um, I'm a great lover of um, Mark Sheridan, musical singer from the early 20th century. Um, and he sang um, the, the, the other seaside song. So there's, I do like to be beside the seaside, but he also sang, um, you can do a lot of things at the seaside that you can't do in the town. So most of my time, sending rock to all of those lovely holiday makers was really spent watching them becoming something else when they, when they got to the seaside, where they could become something that they weren't at home. And they could run around in their bikinis, inventing their new life, buying sticks of rock that were shaped like penises because it was appropriate, 
and then taking them home back to grandma where the context suddenly changes and grandma's got a nice sugar penis to suck on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so mostly within my work now, I tend to make things that don't make sense. Um, I cast the shapes between tableaus, so I cast between people. So my work doesn't exist. I cast plaster lumps with objects where people have been stood together. And really my artwork is the bit that's around, so the bit you don't see in the same way as you connect the dots with Donald McGill, um, who really was just kind of like a low-brow Magritte, really. So, um, the other things that I do are, I mean, I'm trained in ceramics. Quite funny, where did you go? Look at that. I trained in ceramics, um, and I'm a thrower, and I've thrown for years, and I now make um, large cylinders, sculptures. They have to be large because I'm male. Mm -hmm. So they're big. To go with all those potters that have their big kilns and spend days firing them because they're men. Um, but I don't fire my work. I lie. I make it look like clay. But I mix concrete in with the, with the clay, which is the antithesis to clay. We don't like clay as pot earth concrete as potters, we like our earthy materials. Concrete's wrong. So I mix concrete with ceramic, mix concrete with clay and throw, throw with that so I don't need to fire it. Um, and I can wedge it into different spaces so I can build it outside, inside spaces within walls. Um, and just fix it, but I varnish it to make it just look really nicely like wet clay. So it looks like it's recently freshly thrown. So, because I still love the material, I just kind of I, I got tired of sitting up all night firing, really. Um, so yes, context. I don't know what time it is. Got a couple minutes. I've got a couple of minutes. Yeah. Context. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So you, I, I, essentially, I play the Don McGill game. Um, again, the more highbrow of you look at Magritte, so I consider McGill, McGill to be an element of surrealism, in a way. I don't really, I just threw that in to make myself sound intelligent, really, if I knew anything to do with art history. Um, I also, um, I use that hook within other forms of writing, so I also write comedy. I also write um, short films, um, where we just essentially play the context game where we'll put words in people's mouths, quite literally, because most of it's lip-synced. Um, and, Joel, you're, um, Joel, what you're watching to make you laugh, hopefully, sometimes, when I'm doing it. So watch out for BBC Three, at the end of June, anyway. The big field. Um, yes, I think I've run out of things to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's it.